young women are taking to the internet to talk about the extreme amount of pressure to have unnaturally perfect hair 24 7 seven days a week from wigs to braids to uneven hair due to naturally different curl patterns found throughout the head of hair a realistic take on all forms of hair is being showcased i have to say this the expectations that you all have on black women when it comes to their hair i hate it this is not my hair and the sooner that y'all realize that that is not your hair on top of your head the sooner you realize because of that lace showing is not that big of a deal you all be so quick to comment over other people's videos like i see your lace i see your lace you know that this 40 inch is not my hair it's not coming out of my scalp you know that so why do y'all be so pressed on other people any other race they don't hold women that high when it comes to their hair anytime somebody go outside and my hair is not done it's always oh you looking rough or oh this or that like y'all never saw a bad hair day before i don't like it i don't f with it leave me the f alone if you see my lace keep it pushing you don't have to let me know i'm pretty sure i see it too hey hair community and mainly like the braid hair community can we normalize like braids being a little bit fuzzy because i've had these braids in for going on three weeks right excuse the stain on my shirt it's from my daughter if you say something about my stain you're racist but yeah i've had these in for about three weeks and of course it's getting its normal wear and tear you know whatever it's a little frizzy but i'm not taking it out <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not taking these out and it's not for the normal reasons like i did pay decent money for it but i just love my stylist anyway i pay her a thousand dollars i don't care the real tea is i'm not over this style yet okay i like it i'm still rocking it and if you got a problem with the fuzz fight me or redo my hair for me either way and if you're not gonna do either one of those mind your business I'm crazy for you Many women are facing pressure to have unnaturally perfect hair in their everyday life. But just imagine facing this while on vacation. Couldn't it be me or the TikToker Angelically Natural. Here she is showcasing an easy breezy, beautiful hairstyle choice while on vacation. Turns out that Angelically Natural works at ATL's number one protective style studio and home of the seamless crochet hairline. She also works with women who have alopecia. Would you be willing to try this human hair, seamless crochet hairline hairstyle for your next vacation? If so, make sure to check out the resource page below for more information. It seems that easy hairstyles are not only highly sought after by women on vacation, but the fashion industry as well, which might explain why so many black high fashion models have buzz cuts. Have you ever noticed how many black women in high fashion have buzz cuts? If you have, you're not making things up. This is a documented practice within the fashion industry, with fashion insiders confirming that black models with short hair are preferable. But why is this? For many years, black models have spoken out about their treatment backstage, with hairstylists often avoiding black models because they don't know how to manage their hair, or worse, 
doing their hair and completely ruining it, or making racist comments like these. So after years of critique and demand for stylists that actually know how to work with black hair textures, it seems the response is to not do their hair at all. Fashion's current intrigue into dark skin models is promising, but is representation really a win if the knowledge required for our hair is not being catered to? Moreover, it's important to remember the implications of shaving women's hair. In the West, the practice being associated with punishment, and in Africa, some women shave their hair when they become widows. As beautiful as these models are and how important it is to celebrate their space in the industry, when do we begin to critique the fetishism that's clearly coming into play? There's an incredible article with insight from real models on the Black Ballad website right now. Recently, the modeling industry has made strides towards accepting more hairstyles, in particular, the afro and braids. They seem to be loving braids of all types because I have seen multiple different braid styles across runways all around the world. Afros are popular as well, but it seems like most models who wear their own afro out will have to do their own hair. Afro wigs have become a very popular way to give the afro look without sacrificing hair strands. Here are two models talking about how their hair is often put in damaging situations just for the perfect look for a shoot or runway show. Don't. Don't say that. Oh my gosh, I'm probably gonna end up getting unsigned from all the crap I talk about the modeling industry, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about black hair. As you guys see, my hair is very, like, fine. My hair is very similar to the texture of white women with wavy hair. Yet, when I'm on set, the hairstylists still complain about how they don't know how to do curly hair. Like, my hair is hard to manage. So let's talk about how this modeling industry is not ready for black hair, period, because I just had three clients request for me with my locks and I just took my locks out. But when I had my locks, all my agents had an issue with my locks and they wouldn't say that because they've learned to be politically correct, but they had an issue with it because they were like, clients love your curly hair. Like they're not ready for real black hair. Like they're not ready. It seems like hair models and influencers face this issue as well. A YouTuber and hair model with naturally curly hair by the name Jalissa shows through a TikTok how she will never let another client damage her hair for the sake of a product again. Although the modeling world still has a long way to go, I love seeing so many black models booking gigs, especially in Asian countries. Who is your favorite new face or your favorite high fashion model of all time? Models, influencers, YouTubers are not the only ones worried about damaging their hair while on the job. Actresses are concerned as well. Actress Rachel McAdams went through great lengths to protect her natural tresses when she agreed to play the role of Regina George for the hit movie Mean Girls. Rachel McAdams became iconic playing Regina George in Mean Girls, but what was also iconic was her wig, which cost $20,000. And getting into that, not only did she not want to bleach her hair for the role, she didn't want to play the character of Regina George in the first place. And it's because she wanted to play Lindsay Lohan's character of Katie, and Lohan wanted to be Regina. Lohan's reason was she didn't want to play a goody two-shoes, so the director rewrote the script to make her more of a villain. And McAdams didn't want to be seen as a side character, so they upped her screen presence to make her more of the Queen Bee. But her final condition for the role was she wouldn't have to bleach her hair blonde because she was afraid of long-term damage. which died your hair can cause a lot of damage, with an example being Ariana Grande who had to dye her hair red for Victorious. And that's why she switched to wearing a wig for Sam and Cat, where a specialist said it was causing massive damage to her hair. And that's why Ariana Grande always wears a ponytail because years later her hair still has damage from Victorious. And along with health concerns for her hair, she was also worried about bleaching her hair because she had the movie The Notebook to film as well that year. The Notebook was more important because it was paying her a million dollars versus Mean Girls paying her half a million. So the director got her the wig and that's why her hair really wasn't short for $20,000. While we are still on the topic of damage, I would like to share with you guys again another Dominican blowout horror story.
All right, y'all, I'm finna give y'all y'all story time. But before I give y'all the story time, I gotta tell y'all the background information so y'all know a little more, you know, insight on everything. And y'all gotta bear with me because I don't really be on this TikTok and I'm just not learning. So this video might be a little choppy and long. So yeah. So for starters, that was not my first Dominican blowout. That's probably like my third. I just started getting them last year. And the only reason why I started getting them is because I finally went natural for like two years straight to see like where my curl pattern is um and get my hair healthy um and then after i felt like it was like healthy enough to take heat i just did like a little limp check and that's when i got my first dominican blowout so for the first time i ever got a dominican blowout it was at this same location no problems i didn't have any crazy heat damage my curl pattern was a little looser but i suspect all that with a dominican blowout like i know that it's a lot of heat and it requires a lot of heat. But I was never turned off by the heat just because my hair is so thick and so coarse and it could take a lot of, it could take a lot of stuff. Like I used to get perms and it pressed out all the time and never had any heat damage. So I just wasn't worried about heat, especially since I only do it like once or twice a year. So keep that in mind. The first time I went to salon A, and second time I went to a salon B and then third time I went back to salon A. So um, the only reason why I trusted salon A was because my sister had been going there for years. She never had any issue. She was really close with the, um, well not really close, but she knew the owner. So I was like, girl, you know the owner, she never messed up your hair. I trust her. I feel like that's better than like going out testing waters and like testing my luck with people I don't know or have any ties to so um I gave her a shot and like I said the first time I went there wasn't really no crazy heat damage no my experience was cool so the first time I go I go with my sister and we get the owner her name is Nina I'm gonna put her name out there her name is Nina girl the owner is cool like the beef ain't with her the beef is with her workers because that's who my hair so the first time I got my hair pressed out, it was by Nina. So like I said, first time Nina hooked me up, that's the owner. Second time I went, I went by myself. I didn't go with my sister. This is when my hair got damaged in the videos that y'all seen. That was that, that was that time. Jesus, why am I stuttering? So I go in there, everything is normal. Like I get my hair washed. Um, I will say when I get my hair washed there, I don't feel like they do a great job. I feel like they try to like, they a little stingy with their products, baby. Because with my hair so being so coarse, I need conditioner from root to end for like, you know, it to really be washed and conditioned properly. Versus when I go to hair salons, I feel like they just put it on the perimeter of your hair and then try to call it a day brush it out and that bitch be sounding like apples so i will say that about the wash but it was what it was um they put me up under the dryer i had a little curlers in my hair waiting tink 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 so disclaimer the second time i messed up it's because i didn't go back to nina um i went to the other workers that was working there only because nina was full she had five girls waiting on her. They were specifically asking her to press out their hair or do whatever to their hair. They did not want anybody else in there touching their hair. And I was like, okay, maybe that's just her people who made appointments. I did a walk-in. So, you know, when you do appointments, they're going to come first anyway. So I had to get what I had to get. So I was like, my sister's been to other people in this um, in the salon before. Never had an issue. She still had cool results so I was just like forget it I'm just gonna be stuck going to this other lady so I wasn't thinking nothing of it I did say a little prayer when I got in her chair and I prayed that you know the good lord bless my hair and that it, she don't mess me up my prayer was not strong enough so this whole time I go to this lady she keeps like commenting and mentioning how coarse and how thick my hair is but then she follows it up with a compliment saying oh but it's so pretty though but oh my gosh so much hair so much hair i get that all the time literally whether i'm getting my hair braided pressed out whatever people always comment and tell me how thick my hair is like i don't have it and deal with it every day baby i'm coming to you because i don't want to deal with it so 
I'm just like, <laughs> I know, like, I know with all of this, please just do my hair type shit. So, um, she blows, blow dries my hair, whatever. Surprisingly, I did not have like the little burn feeling that you get and you like flinch. She did straight with the blow dryer, I guess. Stay tuned for part three. So this is when she actually fried my hair. Everybody knows you get your hair put in rollers under a dryer and then blow dry it out again. All for the reason so you don't have to keep going over and over when it's time to press it out, right? She literally took certain sections of my hair. I guess it wasn't getting straight enough for her. And I felt her going over it like four times. And I guarantee that's where all the breakage happened because she was going over one section four times after me sitting up on the dryer and her blow drying it. So I'm pretty sure that's when it all happened. After I left the salon, um, nothing crazy really happened at the salon because I didn't think she broke off my hair as bad as she did. Fast forward to yesterday is when I washed my hair and seen all the damage and my hair coming out <clears throat> in chunks. And that's when I knew. And I waited a good month. So between that month period, I usually try to put like my hair in like a low bun or I try to stay away from like high ponytails because I know that causes breakage. But I just put it up after it gets, you know, all oily and like not cute no more. So I finally washed it a month later, which was yesterday. And that's when all my hair was coming out. And I'm going to post some <clears throat> pictures so y'all can see how bad it is blow dry. Because that's when I really seen all the damage. I knew it was some damage the way my hair was falling out. But this is when like I knew it was real, real bad. I look crazy. But as y'all can see, that was my hair blow dried. And... You can see the breakage. And it's literally little parts just like that all over my head. Like it's some in the back, it's some in the front. It's just random. So I don't really know how to cut it. Um, nine times out of 10, I'm just going to take the treatment route, just do hella treatments, um, keep my hair in braids like I've done before, and just wear wigs until my hair go back in protective styles because I don't know what to do with that. So yeah. I myself have gone through my fair share of damaged hair when going to hair salons, which is why I choose to control all of my hair care and learn how to style my hair at home. I started with wigs and weaves, mastered that, then moved on to heat training. I love it because I have 100% control of my hair care while in the comfort of my home. I take my time with my hair, stop if I need breaks, allowing myself room to rest and to eat snacks in between, and as a result, I was able to develop a heat training routine that works for my lifestyle. Interested in becoming a heat train natural or taking charge of your hair care from the comfort of your home? Then feel free to check out the waiting room nhb.com. You know who else does their hair from home? Dominican women. Although some might enjoy going to the salon, some Dominican women do their Dominican blowout from the comfort of their home. Dominican women have taken to the internet to give their best tips and tricks when it comes to doing their hair at home. This includes teaching the Dominican way to wrap your hair. Does anyone preserve their hair this way? Let me know down below. Learning hair care tips from other cultures can be a beautiful thing. But when it comes to the Kardashians, they are known by many as culture vultures. Due to this, people have decided to encourage Kim Kardashian to embrace her Armenian culture. I personally find Armenian cultural braids to be very beautiful. Imagine if Kim Kardashian actually started embracing her cultural heritage and showcasing that to the world. I think that would be fabulous. And I also think that she would look really beautiful with the Armenian headdresses that they often wear with their traditional clothes.
least in this current day and age, Kim Kardashian is being more forthcoming when it comes to her use of hair extensions, which is a step in the right direction. Your hair is bone straight. Oh, and... I thought you were going to ask where I bought it. I don't well, know. No. <laughs> well, no, but I was going to. That was it? I don't know. <laughs> well, so it's what real, percentage so of this hair is real? yours? Yeah. My hair is like to here. Okay, it's down to... And okay. this hair is to here. Okay. But it's mine because I bought it, so it's mine. And, and will you... Yes. Speaking of hair extensions, in the comment section of Dynamic Touch's last video, someone mentioned that they wanted to try Halo extension. Has anyone tried Halo extensions? And if so, how was your experience? I would love to know. As heat styling is growing in popularity, some women have brought up a question that I find very intriguing. Does heat protectant actually work? And this is where I'm stuck because if heat protectant really did what it's supposed to do, then how are the girls that are using heat protectant faithfully every single section still getting heat damage? It seems that many others have had this question as well. Here is a TikToker who decided to experiment with her heat protectant. If heat protectant works under the microscope, we'll do this in two sections. The first section would just have heat protectant and heat, and the second section will just have heat. As always, I'll show you what the hair looks like before. The cuticle is lying very flat, the hair is very shiny. We're going to be using the leave-in spray from Chesame. The directions say to spray six to eight inches away from your hair. Most of the product ended up getting on my hand, so I ended up just spreading it with my hand. For this video, we're going to be doing 100 swipes in each section with a straightener. Now let's get into how heat protectant works. The ingredient that's protecting your hair is called dimethicone. Dimethicone is a silicone-based polymer. So what does that mean? First thing is, is that dimethicone is a silicone. Silicones coat your hair and creates a little barrier. That barrier is doing the protecting and heat protectant. And because it creates that barrier, it also makes your hair feel smoother. Now let's take a look at the results. This is from section two without heat protectant. You can see little specks on the hair strand. That's the hair cuticle. Because heat was applied to the hair, the cuticle opened up. I also found a couple breaks, but I'm going to explain why an open cuticle can be bad for your hair. With an open cuticle, it's easy for hydration to get into the hair shaft. But it also makes it easy for the hydration to leave. This is from section one. The hair is very very smooth and shiny and I don't see any signs of damage. The reason the hair is so shiny is because of the silicone barrier and because the cuticle is flat on the hair surface. Would any of you guys be interested in seeing such an experiment on our channel? But instead of performing 100 swipes, I thought it would be fun to buy heat protectants of different price points and try them out to see how well they would work versus the other. If you guys find this idea very interesting or you're interested in seeing this idea, let me know down below. Speaking of ideas, a hairstylist on TikTok showcased an interesting technique she uses to try to use as little heat as possible on the ends of her client's hair. Are you afraid of getting heat damage? Some people stay away from silk press or flat irons because they're afraid of heat damage. But as you can see, I'm going to show you a technique. So what I do is I take small slices as if I would do any other silk press. This particular guest has finer hair. So especially for my guests who have finer hair, I'm going to start at the roots. I'm going to chase it with the comb to give that silky smooth feel and look. But then I stop when I get to the ends. The ends of our hair is the oldest part of our hair. So it's very porous. So I'm not going to leave her ends like that, of course. But this is a technique that I've been using for years now to prevent from heat damage. So what happens is if you take um, small slices and you go from the roots to the ends, it's perfectly fine to do that. But when you have guests who already have really thin hair, you just want to prevent from putting so much heat on that hair. Yes, I technically, I would say do one pass as I'm doing my silk press. But what I do, here's my technique right here. I leave those ends frizzy and then I... I flat iron that hair in bulk. So I'm going to go back and take all of that hair and flat iron it all at once. And then you don't have to use so much heat from section from section. Y'all, I absolutely love this technique. Normally I would do the whole head, but I just wanted to show you. Would you be willing to try this technique? Why or why not? Not only are women wearing straight hairstyles, but some are going back to sew-ins as well. Unexpectedly, it seems like a lot of younger hairstylists do not know how to perform an old school proper sewing. One young woman shared her experience on TikTok. Okay, so boom, let's get into this little story time about this time I didn't like my hair last week when this girl did it. Okay, so uh bitch looked like Norbit on that Tuesday when he was finna go on his date. Fuck is you talking about? But anyway, so 
I really wanted to get my real hair done, but I couldn't find nobody to do my pixie cut. And everybody I was finding was like, they can do me a, a 20 sound piece. I don't want no 20 sound piece. You was not finna stack all them tracks in the back of my head hole when I got this one piece on my head that's my own. So I found this girl on Facebook to do me just a little sew in till I could find somebody. So I'm headed to get my hair done. And ladies, you know, we be feeling ourselves when we in the car. So the girl got to doing my hair right there. She braided my shit down and was taking my eyebrow off with her pinky but it's cool you see it on her finger <laughs> but anyway so she braided my sh down or whatever look at it that's the little braid down the braids was kind of big and they was tight as hell so i should have known the end it I, you know i don't know but anyway i had told her to leave my edges out because the edge is kind of fragile so she braided or whatever so she get into it and i'm noticing that she's putting the longer hair that's the long hair up there in my bang that that's the 22 i had an 18 or 20 and 22 and i'm like you know i don't want to ask i do her job but i was like why you do that and she said something about a perimeter but okay this what you do this ain't what i do so let me just shut up and get my hair done okay so boom do y'all see that shit over there on the side do y'all know y'all see that so that shit is giving very much mountain very much heel the one that jack and jill was playing on so i'm like uh-uh then the i'm gonna burn me with the hot comb so i'm tripping and she like no i didn't yes you did but anyway look at that shit over there on the side and i'm trying to make it look like all right and it's not all right and then she asked me did i like it and i'm like no but that's what y'all gotta do y'all gotta start telling these folks the truth i was like but thank you though and i still tipped us you know but tell the truth baby when we say traditional so wins this what the fuck we be meaning a good old leave out we got all them swoops and shit going across our forehead. Back up, baby. I'm teaching uh -huh. history right now. But this is what uh -huh. we be saying. See how that shit blended? You ain't got to worry about shit glue. Th this is it. This is traditional so we and me. See how that shit just stop playing. Due to more and more situations like this occurring, some women are swearing off all hairstylists and cosmetologists who were born after 1985. I have seen comments from other cosmetologists saying that the hair industry is not like it used to be. Do you agree? And would you also be willing to set in that rule of not letting anyone born after 1985 touch your hair? Last but not least, I thought I would leave you with advice that really resonated with me, so I thought I would share. I don't know who needs to hear this, but that girl is not your friend. Watch out for those females who will get close to you so they could take notes on you, compete with you, and also try to ruin your plans. I'm gonna tell y'all a little story. I once had a best friend who I thought was like a sister to me, but then I started peeping that she started doing weird stuff. Like every single guy that I liked or took an interest in, she suddenly wanted to go after them. When I got into a serious relationship, she followed my boyfriend on all his socials and liked all his pictures. She would go out of her way to become friends with my friends that didn't know her. And on social media, she would show my friends who had no clue who she was all the love in the world. But then when I would post stuff, it was silence. No likes, no comments, nothing. But she would be at the top of my story views. Every time I told her I had a new goal or plan for myself, she suddenly wanted to do the same thing. And I'm not even trying to sound cocky when I say this, but every time I do go outside, random strangers approach me to tell me that I'm beautiful. And there'd be times that random strangers would approach me and tell me like, oh my God, you're so pretty. And she would get mad at me or she would even get mad at them for complimenting me. And it took me a while to really sit down and realize that she was an enemy disguised as a friend. So watch out for those type of females because your haters are closer than you think. Peace and love though. Has a similar situation ever happened to you personally? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and watching. And I'll see you next time on Dynamic Touch.